talk, don't buy. And welcome to Let Me Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. We have another great show in store for you today. It's uh, <clears throat> actually, a, I think, one of the most amazing art shows, uh, art ex experiences I've ever had is to, to uh, our, my next guest, my guest's uh, uh, art performances or, or art production or painting. I don't know what to call it. I'm going to ask her what to call it. Uh, it just amazed me because... Um, it brings up so many issues, and it's you know controversial on one side, and on the other side, it's so deeply sublime. It's um, a person imagine a person who takes the ashes of the deceased and then makes artwork, a painting, a portrait of that person. Well, somebody does do that, and my guest he Haida Hatri is here with me, right? And uh, Haida is here to talk about her work and her artwork. Welcome to Let Them Talk. So glad to have you here with us. Thank you very much for now, having I, me. Uh, <clears throat> I first experienced your hard work at uh, a, a show that was done uh, concerning uh, Trump, Donald Trump, Dump Trump and See What Grows, which was um, Teresa, who's been on the show, Teresa Burns, been on the show, yeah. talking mm -hmm. about her work. And um, and in that one, you <coughs> pardon me, recreated the uh, American flag using ashes from a burned American flag. Am I correct? Yes. And so <clears throat> the American flag was sort of iconic to the show we were doing. You know, you know, where do we go? Where does America go from here? And, uh, well, I didn't know that the background to that was that you had done these, these, this artwork till I went the other night to see your show um, and to see the work that you do. And so there was numerous expressions of it. And, and then I started reading about you and fascinated by it and had to call you and have you on the show. So tell me a little bit about the type of work you do. I mean, you do a lot of different things, I'm sure, in your career. But tell me about this specifically, this kind of work that you do and how you came to do it. I came to do it in a strange way. Normally, an artist is <coughs> working on some subjects and one subject leads to the next. In my case, I was working on some subjects, mainly working with animal parts and this didn't lead to what I'm doing now. It was something completely different. In uh, um, about 25 years ago, my father died and I was devastated. And I couldn't get over his death for many, many, many years. I, it was just extremely difficult to understand that he's dead and everything. And in 2008, one of my best friends committed suicide and all the pain came back. And I had this sudden idea, why don't I make <coughs> um, portraits out of their ashes? I didn't even have their ashes. In Germany, you don't get the ashes. You don't get any really? part of the corpse. It has to be it has to be buried. You don't even you don't even see it basically. Here it's all people do things. They pour their ashes in the ocean, or yeah, or have their on the mantle. Right, right. Um, so I, I I think it has to do with um, having lived in America already for several years, and having had this experience that a friend of mine had his wife on the mantle, mm -hmm. and I was extremely touched by that. This was the first time that I saw that, right. and I think. My friend died right after I had seen that the first time. Yes. And this combination with what I was working on, I was working on um, port making portraits, mm -hmm. but with a new technique I had invented with wax, I kind of combined these mm -hmm. two things. And um, that's <coughs> how it well, got started. Yeah, I mean, uh, <coughs> pardon me, you have an example. Yeah. Of your artwork, we're, we're honored to have that because it, you know, it's actually bringing yeah. out a copy of the artwork, but the actual artwork itself. Um, I don't know if. Yeah, yeah, fine. There, yeah, yeah, there it is. Oh, good, good, good. And you can swing it around there. Good. You have a close up. You can, <coughs> you cannot who is, really. Who's this person? How did you get their ashes? That is actually the young James Purdy. He's a very famous writer, wonderful writer, very different writer. He, um, we were friends um, from. Um, his, in his last six years, mm -hmm. and he was, yeah, he was, he was, he was. I'll hold it for you. Uh, <laughs> he was a, a, a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. I loved him very much, and he liked this idea. I had talked to him about that, and um, uh, and when he died, 
the person who is responsible for his estate, he um, had learned about that too, and he gave me some of his ashes. Mm -hmm. and that was incredible to make the picture. Yeah. I have not only made him as a young person, but also when he was old, <coughs> in a so way. So, <coughs> so he was older. He wasn't this young one. The young he was ninety four when he died. Okay. But you can do, so you don't necessarily do the picture of them as they were when no. they died at their age, you know, it's often maybe infirm or older, yeah. or maybe or maybe not. I have, <coughs> I have, uh, I, I print out a, a picture of him, so that is, right. and then I, and the picture I choose or have other people choose. So do people search you out to do this now? Is this? Uh, now, yes, but when I was beginning, I was just doing it for myself. Mm -hmm. And then I, it, I had a, Ex it, unbelievable experience because mm -hmm. I suddenly, after I had was in pain for so many years, I a few <coughs> weeks later after I had done it, mm -hmm. which took me several weeks to figure it out and sure. to work on it. I will tell you later mm -hmm. how I work on it. Yeah. Um, uh, it took a l very long time and working on it every day and kind of in a meditative way, I thought that was what made me calm and what was so life-changing for how, me. How long does it take to do one of these? Uh, about six weeks. Six weeks, really? Working every the day? Yeah. The, the for, I, mean, I mean, now I'm much faster. But to figure it out, the first two ha have taken each six mm -hmm. weeks. I see. How many <coughs> have you done so far? I have done a <coughs> lot. Uh -huh. So in the show, there are mm -hmm. 24. Wow. But in the um, altogether, I have made certainly, certainly more than and these are 30, from family six. members or the actual person before they're deceased who, who tracks you down to do that? No. Uh, so at the <laughs> beginning, it was it, there were friends. So yeah. a friend of mine yeah. asked me, his mother had died, he was oh, very I unhappy, see. and he asked me if I could do that too after I had told him what the effect on this of these pictures were mm -hmm. on me, even though I didn't have the real ashes, yeah. but I imagined very much it would be the ashes sure. of my father and of my friend, right. yeah. and that was already enough. I mean, also with a normal relic, if you have the finger of some saint, you think this is the finger of the saint, and that makes it right. real. Relics of saints, that's, that's very, you know, it's <coughs> much bigger in Europe than it is in the United States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think we have, there's a few American saints, but I don't think we have pieces of them that you can go visit at, <laughs> at St. Patrick's. Cathedral. And we have all Europe for right, Europe, pieces. Right, Europe, people for hundreds, <laughs> for a thousand years travel back and forth to yeah. see the little pieces. And there was even a trade in false ones that aren't really the person. <laughs> Maybe right. they are the real person. Have you. Yeah, so but <coughs> what, what I, um, uh, when I say relic, this, these paintings, they are actually relics. Yeah. They are, um, I make them in using a piece of wood, nice, thick piece of wood. Mm -hmm. I cover it with wax and then I put one single piece of ashes next to the other. Sure. Like a Buddhist Zen painting. Sure. It's kind of one piece of ashes next to the other mm -hmm. until wow. the whole picture is ready. That's painstaking. So that's you Very didn't much. And mm -hmm. it's not really a painting. It has nothing to do with painting. It is a mosaic. Okay. You know these nice beautiful mosaics from Ravenna or whatever, where you can f see from far away mm -hmm. a wonderful picture. And if you go closer, you see the stones. Mm -hmm. In this case, the, my little stones are tiny little pieces of dust, of ashes. And therefore, you don't, it doesn't look like a mosaic, right. but it is, well, in you fact. You get very close to it, but the pieces yeah. are so small, yeah. right? And it takes a painstaking sort of approach to doing that. That's why it takes so long. And you mount, basically are mounting each piece in the wax. Yeah. Oh, it picks up. <coughs> Very interesting. Um, so, okay, relics, it's a, a, a death, you know, in, in, we were just discussing that earlier. Death in the United States is a, is a taboo subject. People rarely ever talk about it. It's, like, it's as if Americans expect to live forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> why it is, I don't know. You know, it just, it's not something you ever talk about. And I can say, I'm not sure if it's the same in Europe, but in this country, from the earliest age, you never say cancer. You say CA or C or the big C. You really? Never, yeah, yeah. I didn't I, know. It's changing a little bit. Uh -huh. But, if, you know, when I was young, that's uh -huh. how it was. And you never talked about illness or disease or what somebody died about or if they were getting surgery. You never said what it was for. You always made up excuses for the children. You didn't tell them somebody was going to the hospital or somebody was going to die. You uh -huh. often did not bring children to 
uh, to funerals or definitely to um, <clears throat> to awakes or anything like that. And um, and for a long time, uh, 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 cremation was uh, just not religiously allowed and mm-hmm. not really followed in this country. The, mm-hmm. the whole issue of the United States is to uh, bury a person in their own land. I mean, you mm-hmm. come here with nothing, you gain your own land, and mm-hmm. then you want to be buried in it, usually with a beautiful view, mm-hmm. you know, and of course that was a Jeffersonian idea that never really occurred. <clears throat> there are some interesting cemeteries in the New York area. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I know. However, the price of death is so high now <clears throat> to be buried costs, you know, literally like a wedding, thousands mm-hmm. and thousands of dollars that people, and we call it the American way of death, and it's somewhat a crooked operation. I mean, it's been known to be quite corrupt and to really take people when they're feeling down and most suffering and to uh, mm-hmm. to really hit them hard with a high price. You know, oh, you need a brass casket. Only, you know, a person who doesn't give their loved one a brass, you know, $10,000 casket doesn't really love them. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> which the body is preserved forever, you know, yep. for some reason, for the future or whatever. So uh, yeah, those are some of the reasons. I, I don't know all of them. It's why it's psychologically in the American character that we don't like to talk about death, although that is changing a little bit because of things, artists and, and, and culture and, and mm-hmm. people finally t- be able to tell a joke about death. And, you know, death sucks. We all know it. But at least we can look at it as something we all share. So um, that all said, how do you find the reaction to your paintings or to your, to your mosaics? I should say? It's, it's very um, different. It depends. So I, I had this first uh, friend who wanted a portrait yeah. of his mother and I made it and while I was making it I was thinking he will never have this this life changing uh, feelings as I do mm-hmm. because he's not sitting there for hours and hours and hours to make it right. and I was completely convinced that that was the life changing thing mm-hmm. but he got it and he texted me all the time that mm-hmm. it would be absolutely wonderful and he would feel her presence and it would be so intense and I thought oh, that's interesting well, um, yeah a- and I a- and then other people I told other people about it and other people gave me the ashes of their family members and they all had this intense feeling of the presence and I was I'm very much wondering why that is. And I read a lot about relics and stuff, but I also remembered that I was a rare bookseller for 17 years when I was in Germany. And um, there are books which are signed by the author. And these books are more valuable to people mm-hmm. in a way because they know the author, They or they, they love the author sure. so much that if the book is signed or even dedicated to somebody important, they really like that. And yeah. they don't, n- they not only like it, it's also a higher price. It's also this value is- it Increases the value. In, right? Yeah, and why is that? Because some, some ink is in the book uh, that wouldn't make sense. So this presence which, which happened only for a tiny little amount that makes people already feel like wow this is right. awesome they have the and this there with them. and what what is here what i am doing is exp- it's just mm-hmm. thousand times as intense and at the opening at ubu gallery where the show is on right now okay. and it, and will be on actually for a longer time than it is um uh, Originally, it is uh, planned yeah. because we we just decided it today. Where is Ubu Gallery? Ubu Gallery is in, on the Upper East Side, very much in the east, on 59th Street, um, uh, east of First Avenue. Okay, east of Fourth Avenue. On, First. Uh, east of First Avenue, mm-hmm. sort of Yorkville, right that area. On on what street again? On 59. 59. Oh, so it's straight. We're right. We're on the west side of 59. So it's exactly. Straight the other it's way. Ex- by the exactly. Bridge, yeah. By exactly. The, all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. All right, great. <coughs> Ubu Gallery. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to be there for a bit longer. Yeah, it was supposed to be there until March 7th, mm-hmm. but it will be there longer. Right. We have not decided yet how long. Right, and I think I have here the address is uh, 416 East 59th Street, New York City. And uh, ubu gallery, ubu gallery.com to get more information on like, yeah. and things like and that. Yeah, and there are more pictures. There are, 
You can see the pictures oh, which feel, are the show. I don't know if they do the same thing in Europe, but uh, for a long time, in the, in the 19th and early 20th century, especially in the 19th century, they would actually, when photography was first invented, or you became popular, they would actually take a deceased person and then dress them up and photograph mm -hmm. them, and yeah. people would keep those, that including children and babies, and you can see them on the internet. Yeah, and, uh, and <coughs> that's w um, why I brought the book. Um, there in in the book this is i i always document my work mm -hmm. if, if i make a bigger project in a book and i often collaborate with people mm -hmm. who are um uh, who are kind of interested in the same subject sure. or whom i asked uh, or whom i ask what they think about mm -hmm. that subject mm -hmm. and in this case i have included um uh, the burns um um uh, collection um let me, sure. let me. And we have Ida Hatri, <coughs> who's talking about Icons and Ash, which is her art project mm -hmm. <laughs> of sorts, yes. in which she creates uh, mosaics of people similar to this, based on their ashes that taken actually using as a medium the ashes from their cremation. And Stanley Burns and Elizabeth Burns, they have this amazing archive of photography. And they have uh, written an article about um, post-mortem mm -hmm. photography in Europe and America. Okay. So um, the book is very... Post-mortem photography. Exactly. That's what they call it. Yeah. Okay. And there w it was a lot going on. And the post-mortem photography in America and Europe was completely different. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know more? Okay. You can l let's look at the oh, book. Let's take a look. Icons and Ash. Where is this book available? Can you just get the same way you get any other book? That will be everywhere, uh, everywhere available in March. Okay. Um, on the 3rd of March is the official uh, release date. Okay. But already now it's uh, available in the gallery. It's available at, at the New Museum bookstore um, uh, and um, uh, at different places. Uh, uh, what kind of what museums are you in? Are you in any any important museums like the New Museum or things like that? But you mean my work? Yeah, your work. No. It should be. It's definitely on people's mantles, right? All over. That's probably the best museum of all. Uh, what what <coughs> I find interesting mm -hmm. um, as well, if you hold this book yeah. and I hold this book, you will see that they are not the same. This is the image of James Purdy. This is the image actually of the mother of my art dealer the mother of um, oh, uh, really? the uh, owner of Ubu Gallery. Sure. And I have, um, uh, these are handmade um, uh, tip-ins. Mm -hmm. They are printed onto sandpaper so that they give a kind of feeling of oh, these wow. ash paintings. Mm -hmm. And because Thank it's handmade, I mm -hmm. thought I could as well make it individually. Mm -hmm. So everybody who has, um, sure. uh, uh, for whom I made a portrait mm -hmm. and who wants the book can have the book with their portrait. On the cover. On the cover. Oh, that's great. Wow. And, and of course, here's the same picture on the inside. So then <coughs> what, is, what is the book about how you did it or about the person's life? or what No, 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 no. It's, um, it's all about um, uh, different aspects of death. I see. So how we deal with death in art history, how, right. how we have dealt with death in art right. history how we have dealt in, um, with death in different um, societies mm -hmm. in history, um, uh, different aspects of death, mm -hmm. how um, ecological death mm -hmm. is today, right. um, uh, personal experiences of people with dead, sure. um, uh, with their relatives or somebody who was right. important to them. Um, it's really diverse and right. Beautiful, I think. <coughs> so I want to get back to that. Has it been controversial? Have you had uh, what kind of positive, what kind of negative reactions? Have you yeah, the the positive reactions are much more. You have more positive. Than much negative. more, yeah, much because more. because the um, not only the people who have the the portraits made mm -hmm. because of their intense feeling. For example, at the opening was the most intense opening I ever. Uh, attended. Of the show at Ubu. Be yeah, because people saw the first time their relative there, and it was really intense. And um, and th these people who are so happy about their portrait, they tell other people about it. There are, of course, people who find it horrifying, but they find rather death horrifying, mm -hmm. not so much um, uh, 
what I'm doing. Something they would rather not talk about. Or exactly. About, you know. and, and to make it visible that that person is dead and not have it in the urn, but have it <coughs> exposed, right, right, right. that is a step which is not so easy. And I remember mm. when I first had made, um, uh, especially when my friend was next to um, my desk, I sometimes had to take off the the um, the the portrait and put it just put aside, it aside for yeah. a while because mm -hmm. it was so intense. This this presence was mm -hmm. felt so intense. I see. And, so, and, and uh, the the yeah. neg negative, I wouldn't even say negative. I um, I mean, some people just say, oh, oh no, oh no, this, mm -hmm. uh, and that is it. There's no conversation with people who right. don't like it, right. but there are um, uh, different reactions to the to the painting, f uh, to the portrait. For example, um, uh, I had several people who said, um, "If you if you can sell these these portraits," because I was talking about this problem mm -hmm. of finding a new gallery. I had lost my gallery who had yeah. represented me in July. Uh, my show was supposed to be in October, and I didn't have a. a a gallery, but I, the book was already almost printed, and sure. uh, I needed a show. So um, I was thinking that it would be easy to find with this intense, beautiful work a gallery, and it was not easy. And for example, one person told me, my collectors come into the gallery, and they say, I want this. And if I can't sell it, because that is the person of it's a business. Art is a business. Yeah. No, but but he couldn't. The art the art dealer can't sell it because it doesn't belong oh, to I the see. art dealer. It belongs to that person I who's see what you're who's, oh, right, whose mother it member. is. Right. Right. So, so the, they want to sell it, which is hard to believe. That would exactly that would happen in many cases. Exactly. So the idea is a, a commission based idea. So you see that you have the ashes of your right. relative, and then you say. I love this idea. I want that too. Right. Or somebody dies, and you have heard about it, and you want that. So you haven't found that Americans are so quick to just sell portraits of their parents and family. Doch, they I can found. Get some money. I oh, I Mom, did. You're finally worth something. <laughs> Not in this way. Right. Um, uh, the, <laughs> the 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 people. Nicer uh, than my <laughs> jaded approach. <laughs> no, no, but uh, in a similar way, um, uh, I one woman said, for example, you can you can. Sell my mother. I don't. I don't mind. There's so much ashes. You can actually. I need. I need maybe a handful of ashes. A small handful of ashes. Maybe two, two spoons full of ashes. To do. To do the the whole thing, oh, really? and um, so, she said. There's so much ashes, and if that is your problem, that your your uh, art dealer can't can't mm -hmm. uh, ha doesn't have anything to sell. You can sell. Wow. Or you can make another picture. I want one, but you can make another picture and that you can sell. Right. And actually, I told that to some other people and they said, oh, yeah, fine with me. Right. So I have made several pictures double, yes. one for sale and one for the people. Well, ultimately, it's a portrait of somebody. I mean, eventually they die and the portrait of them goes. I mean, the difference Yeah, and if, if you just material. like the portrait, <laughs> if you just like the picture, right. and if you just see it as an artwork, it's totally yeah. normal. And, and the, the other reaction was, very intense reaction regarding um, uh, the the person. So there was one woman whose husband um, uh, I made, who was also a friend of mine. And um, uh, at the opening, a friend of hers asked, "Would you? I would like to commission Heide to do a, um, a portrait of him as well, mm -hmm. because they." kind of um, had a very long uh, um, time when they helped him to die. Nice. Uh, he was very sick, but over a long period of time, and they kind of worked together, and it was they were very close. So the um, uh, wife said, no, under no circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's my husband, and I don't want anybody to have this portrait as well, I see. which I totally understand, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's a totally different approach. They are the secrecy of the the ashes of the person, the understanding that this is actually 
the person. It just is not just a portrait. It is that person. And that is also this intense feeling that if you understand that, it's really something completely different. Right. Uh, well, I, I can see that. I mean, <coughs> um, it to me, it's the most interesting thing. At the same time, some part of me recoils, yet the other part of me says, what a great idea. And I think that's what made me interested in mm -hmm. it because I'm, it's touching something inside of me yep. by doing that. And, yep. and to me, that makes it great art. Ida, so thank you for coming and talking to us. We have thank a few more you. minutes. I know you wanted to uh, show me some of the other work you've done. I know you have a, um, your other books. Let me, I'll hand them to you, and maybe we can talk a minute or two on each one. Oh, yeah, okay. So this was my first project. As I said, I always yeah. um, uh, document my work with it. This was a kind of interesting project because it was about skin. And um, uh, skin is basically giving you your identity. Sure. If you have a big rash or something, you can't even be recognized. Right. And I curated this show for a museum in, uh, um, in Germany um, and invited seven, um, seven artists who are working with skin. She, for okay. example, is working with skin in a way that she um, makes uh, sculptures out of pig skin, sews them together, puts them somewhere in the landscape, lets them rot, and then takes picture of it. Or she covers all kinds of things with, um, uh, with uh, pig skin also. And um, uh, these look then like a real pig skin, for example. Oh I, I can't help but ask, doesn't this bring certain people, like, you know, reminds people of very bad memories of history and things like that? I oh, mean, the, the, it mean, did, it did, actually. Know, the Holocaust and things like that, you know. It did, but um, uh, in this case, Another it was... Another show <laughs> we have to do. It, it, in this case, it was um, uh, absurd, but to go back to, um, uh, to the ashes, in that case, I had a huge problem was um, the history because I completely stopped working on it because I suddenly realized as a German you can not possibly work with human ashes. What changed your mind quickly? I um, uh, researched what the Nazis actually did and that was so brutal and so horrible and exactly the opposite that I... Um, uh, right, so they did brutality and you did beauty. Yeah, but yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Haida, for joining us on let them talk. We have to have you on to talk more about this. This is very interesting. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And we'll see you later.